All right, let's make some owl fingerless mitts. I made the left one up first. So we're gonna be working on the right one, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like on. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is I've got a number seven, whoa, there's the camera, five millimeter hook. Let's get the light on that a little bit better. And I've chained 32 with a number four worsted weight acrylic yarn. Now you can use cotton, you can use anything you want for this, but I'm gonna go ahead making sure that I have a straight loop. I'm going to join them with a slip stitch. Now I work in the back loops only because when I am done with working my chain, I then have this nice finished edge where I don't have to do anything extra to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my chain so that I'm working in the back nub of my chains. That back hump that we see when we flip over the chain, that's where I'm working. So I'm gonna put 32 stitches into the back hump of this chain going all the way around. All right, when you're working in that back lump of the um, beginning chain, it will twist as you get to that very last stitch. So you'll have to twist it going forward and make sure that you know you straighten it out as you go before you join. And we should have 32 stitches on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 2, 3, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. All right. All right. Join that with the first single crochet that you made with a slip stitch. All right. There is going to be a little bit of a nub there. If you want, you can do something to cover that up, but that's going to be the back side of your mitt. So. If you don't really care how that looks, I don't mind that being there. So it's gonna be preference. You could also put a, a decorative um, row of single crochet on this side too, just to cover that up if you want to. All right, so I'm gonna leave it and go forward. Now we're gonna start working in double crochets. I am going to chain two, and now I'm doing this just to kind of fill in that hole that double crochets can tend to make. Um, if I were to chain three and treat that as a double crochet and then come back, there would be this small gap here. I really dislike those kinds of gaps. I feel like they don't look professional. So what I do is I chain two, and actually it went this way. I chain two and then I double crochet in the exact same stitch. That way it closes up that hole and it looks all filled in. So that's what I did. I went in the same as the join and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna double crochet in every single one of these stitches going around. So you'll have 32 double crochet on round two. All right, I have double crocheted in every single crochet and now I'm gonna skip that chain two and I'm going to join with the first double crochet with a slip stitch. What that does is that closes up that gap in between. And so we're gonna to continue to do that chain two and double into the same space throughout the rest of this mitten. All right, so we are going to now start creating the owl. We're gonna double crochet into the first 15. So this is number one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And just because I wanna make sure that I didn't miscount, I'm gonna count it again, one, two, Okay, 15. We are going to chain two, and we're gonna skip two. And we're gonna double crochet into the remaining stitches going around. All right, we're on row four. So what I did is I went ahead and I crocheted, double crocheted the first 12. 
So now we're actually going to start creating the owl itself. Okay, so you're going to skip the first two stitches here and you're gonna front post treble crochet around this post and around the first chain of this chain too. So let's do that. Make sure that these stay loose, otherwise they will pull and yank. All right, so we've gone around the post and the first chain. Don't go in the first chain, just go around it. Now we're gonna work in these posts that are behind here that we skipped over, and we're gonna do a front post treble crochet around them as well. Now here's my way of doing this. I just kind of squish everything down so that I can see the post that I need to be in, which here's my first one. And you'll have to make sure you watch where you're putting your posts and you get around the right ones. And here's my second one. I know it feels a little scrunchy right now, but after you're done doing those, you can pull everybody up back where they belong. Now we are going to create a little um, feet or tail feathers. I'm not sure what they are exactly, but we're gonna do two front post double trebles. So you're gonna wrap one, two, three times, go behind the chain two and around the skipped double crochet from the row below. Squish everything down so you can see what you're doing and front post double treble. Two, three, and do that around the next double crochet. Two, three, four. Pull everybody up where they belong and see how that fills in that spot underneath. Now we are going to skip this chain one that's remaining on that chain two and this double crochet here, we're going to front post treble crochet around the next two stitches. So yard over twice, and remember, keep them loose. And because we want everything pointing in towards the center of the bird, we're now gonna work across the top of these, and these are gonna become the behind stitches, so we won't have to do that same move like we did over here. We're gonna front post treble crochet around the remaining chain of that chain two. and the next available double so that it it now goes like this go ahead and finish working in the remaining double crochets that are open on this row by putting a double crochet into each all right at the beginning of round five i once again double crocheted into 12 so now we are gonna work into or around the posts of the treble crochets that we created. So we're gonna do a front post double, front post double, and then make sure you don't skip these guys behind and work these next. That helps solidify your cable stitch. We're gonna skip over these two double trebles that we did and we're gonna go around the post of the next. And then these last two here as well. So you should have a total of eight front post double crochets going across your owl, having skipped the double trebles in between. And go ahead and double into the remaining doubles around. On round six, I double crocheted into my first 12 and we're just going to front post, double crochet in eight across our owl. We're filling in the body here. Now round seven, we're gonna be putting in our thumb. Although the owl portion of it is gonna stay the same, we're gonna be doing front post double crochets across the body of the owl for row seven as well, but we are gonna be putting in our thumb, so um, don't jump too far ahead, I'll be right back. 
All right, we're starting round seven, and I want you to just kind of notice that on the left hand uh, mitt, the left thumb, you know, obviously points towards the center. So on the right hand one, we are going to be doing basically the opposite stitch move. So when you do go to do your left um, mitten, because I'm not going to do that in this video, when you do go to do the left mitten, you're just going to flip the stitch counts so that you are going in the opposite direction. Um, so like here we are going to double crochet into four. One, two, three, and four. But as you can see, we ended with four on this round, and this is the end of that row instead of the beginning. So you will actually start with your 12 that goes around, do your eight front post double crochets, and then you will do one, two, three, four, five with the chain and skip. Here, we're going to start with the chain and skip. So we've got, we've got the one, two, three, four, chain four, skip three, one, two, three, and double into the remaining five stitches. three, four, and five. Okay, so like I said before, we are going to front post double crochet around the remaining body of the owl. And then you will just double crochet into the rest of the double crochet is going around. But like I said, on the left one, these are reversed. You'll start with the 12, then do the five, the chain skip, and then end with four. Here you started with four, did the chain skip, five, bird, and then 12. I hope that made sense and I didn't confuse you. Alrighty, we're on row eight and I've already done my first four. I'm gonna go ahead and put four double crochets around this chain. Now don't worry, I know that we've added a stitch in here that wasn't previously here. We will correct that when we create our thumb gusset in the next round. So go ahead and double crochet right up to your owl. We're going to be putting some more cable in on this round so get ready to do some front post travels all right so we're going to skip these first two i'm going to front post treble around the next two remembering to keep them nice and loose now we're going to do that funky behind the the trebles move again. Make sure that you locate which ones are yours and treble around those posts. And the next one, pull everybody up, skip the next two. And since we got rid of those double trebles down here, we don't have to worry about doing anything with them now. And front post treble around the next two. Oh, that's right, we're not going behind, we're going in front. What am I doing? Even I forget. All right, so now we have just created the owl's face, or at least the base for his face. Okay, go ahead and double crochet in the remaining doubles around. All right, we're on round nine, and we I did my first four. Now double crochet in the first of the thumb. These center two right here, we're gonna do a double crochet decrease. and take out that extra stitch we threw in there. The reason we did that 
is because when you're creating a glove, you want there to be a little bit of extra room for this, you know, the space of your thumb. And so you want to bring it out, but I brought it back in right away because my, my hands are like a medium large, but they are very short. I'm very short bodied everywhere. So um, I did my decrease right away. If you need a little bit more space because you have longer hands, then I would go one more row up and do my decrease in here as opposed to right down in here. Um, either way, you're gonna wanna get that decrease in before you get way too far past your thumb. All right, so bring it right up to the owl. Okay, and now we're going to just go ahead and do front post double crochets around all of the front post trebles that we just put in, making sure to get behind because they like to hide. And this just helps pull everybody forward so we can see all of our lovely cabling. Because I'll tell you what, cabling is not easy in crochet. It can be quite daunting depending on how you do it. So hopefully this gives you a nice taste of what cable crochet is. And then go ahead and double crochet in the remaining stitches the rest of the way around. All right, round 10 brings us right back to where we were um, as far as dealing with the stitches over here. So I just did my 12. We are going to go and do this one more time as far as the um, cable. So skip these two, treble, front post treble, around the next two. And this one's behind again. So front post treble and treble, pull everybody up, we're going to do that again, skip two, treble, staying in front, skip over here, and this one, and then double in the remaining doubles going around. So basically what we've done here is this is the little face and now we've created the little ears. We're gonna do something special in the next round. All right, round 11, we are back up to our owl. We're gonna front post double crochet around the first two this is the special part. We are going to double crochet, not in a post, just in the regular stitches in the next four, which would be all the hidden stitches in the back there. So double crochet in those, and then front post around the next two. What we're doing here is we're accentuating those little eyebrow feathers or ears or whatever that is on an owl. And that's the last of the post stitching that we're gonna do on this owl. So go ahead and finish up this round with the double crochet and then round 29, I'm sorry, not 29. Go ahead and finish up the double crochet in this round and then rounds 12 and 13, you're just going to double crochet in each stitch around. So you should have a total of 32 stitches again. Um, so go ahead and do 12 and 13. I'll meet you back here for round 14 and 15. All right, I filled up rounds 12 and 13 with double crochets all the way around. So here I am at the beginning. I'm going to just chain one because I'm going to do front post double crochet and back post double crochet to create a ribbing or a faux ribbing around the top of my 
um, mittens. So every other one, front post, back post, front post, back post. I'm going to do this for this row and then on row 15 I'm going to come back I'm going to go right back over the same spots. I'm going to put a front post around the front post and a back post around the back post to create this ribbed look at the top of my mitten. All right, I have completed my right mitten and that's with ending with two rounds of front post and back post double crochet. Now I'm going to quick talk to you about some ways that you can um, customize these so that they fit you. Now I, like I said, I have very short, very stubby hands and so the way that I made these might not be long enough or thin enough for you or big enough for you. It depends on what hand you're trying to make this for. So the goal is to keep the owl centered in your hand. So if you are going to maybe make this for someone who is smaller than me, my suggestion is to um, take, if you're going to go down a size, I would take away four stitches from your original chain. And then when you're working the pattern itself, subtract two stitches from each side of the beginning. So um, when you're at your join, take away two stitches from your start and then adjust two stitches at your end. Okay, so that you're always working those four less stitches at the beginning, at the end, and the end because that will keep everything um, centered on your hand. If you're looking to make this longer, the place where I would add is I would add a double crochet row right after this single because like I said, my hands are pretty short and so like this is this is the top of my hand and this is where my fingers begin okay so when i say i'm i'm stubby i'm stubby so if you want to add to that put a double crochet row here and if you need to add to the wrist length do it here before you start your front post and back post double crochets you'll be able to customize you know your fingertips and your wrist a lot easier um, when it comes to, we talked about gusset when we were working through the pattern. Um, if you have a longer, because this is where the top of my thumb or my, my thumb gusset is. So I decreased mine right above my knuckle bone. Um, if you are very long in this section, whereas I am not, uh, like I said, I would go up one row before I did this decrease here for, um, bringing that back in so that it, you know, cups in at my wrist as opposed to being one stitch larger because that'll just be too roomy there. Um, if you feel like you are um, very, very thin in the wrist, you may want to bring it in two stitches, but just remember when you're working to adjust that off of your count on the back side of your work. Um, this will take some, you know, if you're going to be customizing this for people, I'm not, I'm not writing out the different customizations. I'm just trying to give you some different ideas because I know that not all things fit all people. And now if you are looking to increase, say you want to make this for a man, um, you know, once again, who has longer hands or wider hands than myself, mine are about three and a half to four inches across, um, then I would say... Uh, they're very, they're fairly average hands in reality, but I just, I think they're stumpy. <laughs> so, um, but if you want to make this for a man, once again, you could increase the length just by adding an extra row of double crochet after that first single crochet row. Um, and then, you know, work on the wrist here, but I would add four stitches so that when you're working from the center and you're um, starting your rows, you're adding two to each side of this. So the beginning of your row, you'll add two. The end of your row, you'll add two stitches. So that would be going up a size. And the reason why it's important for you to do it by fours and not twos is because it helps to keep this owl centered in your um, hand. And it matters when it comes to um, the wrist because you are working in twos here. Um, I mean, I suppose you could do it in two and only increase by one on, on each side, but, and I don't want to confuse you, but 
um, by my estimations, the four stitches should adjust for small and large um, hands. So good luck. I hope that you enjoy this pattern. And if you have any questions, always reach out to me.